Look, the biggest podcast where you can learn them lessons. Line for line where you can learn from different sections. Made it out the mud, come tell your story, blessings. Never know who listening, never know who stressing. Divine gave you a voice, come speak your honest truth. Line for line, go ball for ball, it's up to you. Wanna talk sports, gov, and politics? Wanna talk about where you from and your accomplishments? The line for line is really where you need to be. A platform that's really made for folks like you and me. You can find it all no matter what you seek. Whether you calling or you listening, tune in every week. All right, just like that, we're back on another episode of Line for Line Podcast. I'm your host with the most, Devon Booker. We have two special gentlemen in the building today. I'll let you guys introduce yourselves to the world. I'm Ryan Horder. I'm assistant varsity coach here at Indian Trail. And then I'm Lane Oaks. I'm the head baseball coach here at Indian Trail. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, Line for Line, they already know you, Rod Guy, because you came on the episode already, and we got millions of views, millions of likes. <laughs> Everyone's yelling your name. Just tell us a little about your experience to be back on Line for Line podcast before we kick this off. Yeah, it means a lot. I mean, I, I remember you hit me up a while back, and I thought the actual scene of being out on the field was an absolute awesome opportunity, and I yeah. thought... It was a great experience, and I remember coming back to Indian Trail and mm. getting this opportunity that Lane gave me. I was like, this would be a perfect opportunity to get you know, him some exposure as well as the community to know that there's new faces in town for Indian Trail baseball. Yes, sir. For you, young man, how does it feel to be on this podcast for the first time? Is this your first podcast? I was going to say, honestly, being on any podcast is awesome. Mm. I... I'm old, man. Like, I know I'm only 26, but, like, I'm an old soul. Like, yes, Pops sir. grew up listening to AM radio, so I listen to music, but, like, podcasts are up here for me, man. Yes, so, like, sir. OG Bill Simmons, right? The yeah, 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 like, definitely. That, that's definitely. me. This is, this is, I'm where I need to be. You know? That's actually how I got started. I worked at the freighter in Milwaukee, driving there every day, driving in the morning. I'm like, I don't want to listen to music at 6, 7 in the morning. I need something that's not going to give me a headache yep, when I get there. Yep. And that's when I started looking at the podcast. I was like, hey, this is already what I like to do. Nope, yeah. I always wanted to be a radio show host. And I was like, podcast, I do it on my own time. I have my own platform. I have my own equipment. I get to be the boss. And, and you're killing like it. Yeah, and hey, I, pre- it, I appreciate that. <laughs> but as we get ready to get underway, sir, just tell us a little bit about you, young man, your journey, your baseball story, and how you became a coach now. Okay, so um, for me, baseball was never really my number one. What? Football, man. Football, man. Go check the tape. No, no, no. I saw it on Huddle. I saw it on Huddle. Yeah, no, I so I was actually a football player all the way growing up. I, didn't, I really didn't like baseball. I kind of just did it because my friends played it, right? So, like, it was more so just grinding with my friends, doing that, right? Like, really good athlete, could play good defense, um, smart, mm-hmm. but I couldn't hit, man. What? I could not <laughs> hit for no life for me. If you, if you saw me taking a bat, like, freshman, sophomore, junior year, like, I'm going to get mine, right? But, mm-hmm. like, just swinging at bad pitches, not really having an approach, not really locked in. Yeah. Um, and then my senior year came, um, and we, we made it to state, which was awesome. But football-wise, offers that I wanted just weren't there. Mm-hmm. And then uh, my old travel baseball coach was coaching at, uh, was coaching at Triton Junior College full ride and i'm like i can't i can't turn that down yeah yeah yeah. and then uh, i got there and just fell in love with the game you know you learn so much more at the college level Mm. you're around a lot smarter guys um and just enjoying that grind junior junior college baseball junior college anything yeah is a grind man it's 365 like you just have a new appreciation for whatever it is you're doing. For me, it was baseball. Um, So that kind of grew my love for the game. And then as I was doing that, I was coaching uh, basketball, football, and baseball. Active young man. Oh, yeah, Active young man. Yeah, Yeah, the whole reason I'm doing this is to give back to my community. Mm. Um, Because coaches, every coach I have, I still call them coach to this day. I still talk to them, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, phone call. Um, they all they all hold a special place in my heart. Some of them good, some of them, you know, not so much. But yeah. it's still the respect level there and just the fact that they were there for me to help me grow mm-hmm. and become the character that I am today. Yeah. I like that you say that because ideally, in my eyes, I think a coach is more than a coach. Sometimes a coach could be a big brother, a father figure, you know, a pastor, a mentor, you know. Sometimes coaches are taking kids home, like giving them yeah. rides home, things like that. Like, I have so many coaches that I remember as well, too, and that I still talk to this day. So for you to say that, I was like, that hit close to home that's oh, yeah. what we expect that, i mean that's why we're doing it right yes, like, it's for the kids like mm-hmm. it's awesome if i'm in the newspaper or something like that like having this opportunity great but 
the end of the day, it's about the kids, and I want to give them what I had as a player. Of course. So now you're big time and being the head coach for the baseball program here. And can you just tell us, like, yeah, excuse me, I can't talk. Can you just tell us exactly what your role will be for the program as well, working next to this young man here? Yeah, so originally when he was telling me that he was going to apply, you know, that was something that obviously I wanted to do with him, uh -huh. not without him. Um, this opportunity was really only going to happen with him being at the helm. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously my background is pitching, right? Yes. So anything pitching wise, um, that's really what I'm gonna try to tap into with these kids. But like you said earlier, a lot of this has to do with just being a coach and being a mentor mm -hmm. and understanding that this is just the first step in their process and their hopefully long career in baseball. Mm -hmm. And like you said even earlier, like this isn't about necessarily the drills that you're gonna learn, right? It's about can you trust that coach? Can you trust that player? And can this be a relationship where it's not, hey, this is my friend, but this is somebody that I trust and I look up to by calling him coach or by doing whatever that means, right? So I'm here to really just be a helping hand to him, um, really build this program from the ground up. That's how we want to look at it. Mm -hmm. You know, Coach Schmidt did a great job when we were in co or when we were in high school of really building this thing and making it like a safe place where we wanted to show up and we wanted to play. Of course. And we we were excited to play. And I'm not saying that we lost that in the past, but you know, this is something that we want to grow. And you see great programs around the state. It's like. It doesn't always happen the first year, but it's something that you see and kids are growing up, going to middle school, like, oh, I want to go play for Indian Trail Baseball. Like, that's our goal here, and we're looking to get back to state. That'd be of course. Awesome. Now, with you guys being buds, obviously you guys were teammates as well, too. Just tell us a little about the camaraderie that you guys have between each other that you hope to implement into this program going forward. I'll let you take that one. Yeah, so... It, it, Looking back at it now, um, we can look at it and we can laugh, but I was kind of that, uh, I was the guy that held everyone accountable, right? So in the time, at the time, I wasn't the most liked on our team. No way. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Not by the younger guys, I should say. <laughs> right. Younger guys. Well, because yeah. we, had, we had some sophomores on our team that really ended up leading us and helping us, right? Like, and when I say leading us, like, they were, a, they were the X factors, mm -hmm. right? Like, every team that you have is going to have your juniors, your seniors that have been there. But it's the sophomores, right? It's those juniors that were playing JV last year that are really going to help you elevate your team and get there, right? Mm -hmm. So I was the, I don't want to swear, so I'm going to say I was the a-hole, right, to hold them accountable and get on top of them, right? And they didn't like it at the time, but I remember having a conversation with him probably four years, five years ago, and he literally was like, thank you, like, thank you for holding me accountable because it prepared me for college. 100%. Right, so, like, the older guys, like, they already knew how I was, right? Like, I wanted to win. Mm -hmm. And it always wasn't the best, but you you knew that I meant business and you knew that I was coming across in a good way. Of course. Right, so it was, he was my little brother and I knew that he had the talent, so I was on him. Like, I was like, man, like, you don't understand, like, you're just playing just to play, but at one point in your life, you're going to be playing more for more than that. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of just being that big brother and, you know, being okay with being the bad guy because in the end, it was the right thing to do. Right, and if I could build on that, like, I, I think what he said was perfect. It, it wasn't necessarily a comforting feeling right away, like, but in reality, hindsight, that's 100% what you need in a team, yeah, right? You, you need your leaders to be your upperclassmen that can look down on the guys that have talent and are coming up and you know they are. Mm -hmm. And not let them slack around at practice, not let them, you know, want to be somewhere else when you're supposed to be in the moment at practice or at a game, right? Of course. So I think that team specifically my sophomore year and his senior year, it was just a different feeling. We weren't the best on paper. But man, when you actually put it together and saw the growth throughout the year, it came from things like that. It wasn't because of our natural talent on the field. It, mm -hmm. I, I can promise you that. Now, when you say that we weren't the best on paper, always, oftentimes, you gotta understand that there's tangibles that you don't find on a stat right. sheet that people are really good at, like you said, being the leader, helping hold people accountable. They don't put stuff like that on paper. Mm -hmm. And when you don't get stuff like that on paper, you can't really define how good a team can actually right. be and how far they can go. So I like right. that you said that, because yeah. that gave me a little talk. And it, it's too. scary nowadays in baseball because it's like, it's a very independent process. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. everybody looks at Summer Bowl and they're like, oh, I gotta get my numbers, I gotta get my ABs, I gotta get my innings so that I can get recruited, right? Mm -hmm. You don't really have that team aspect in summer ball. Where you come to high school, it's like, man, this is supposed to be fun. This is mm -hmm. supposed to be when you put all that stuff aside and just try to go win ball games. Of course. And just playing with the boys. That's how we felt, and that's why we had so much fun playing here. And if we can just bring 10% of that back, man, I, it's the sky's the limit. Of course, of course. Now, with both of you guys being special enough to take your talents outside of high school, you going to Auburn, Milwaukee, 
parks. I averaged, what was it, 14 starts out of the 25 games you were there? You know, I looked you up. I looked you up. <laughs> right while I did the research. But just tell us about some things that you guys learned in college ball that you plan to implement into these young guys, because obviously you guys got the experience that you can give back and help coach them to be better players than they already are. Yeah, yeah. So for me, um, my first year, I went to Triton first, which is a junior college, and we were one game away from the College World Series. So mm -hmm. uh, the junior college World Series, that is. Um, so I learned how to, you know, at the beginning of the year, I was kind of the guy, one of the guys. <laughs> um, so, like, I was hitting in the six, five, four, three. I even let off. And then I got hurt, and I learned how to sit. And I learned sitting next to my coach, I learned a lot about the game, right? I was picking his brain. I was listening to what he was saying, um, just listening to what he was talking about pitch by pitch, right? Um, and kind of just being a sponge and taking that in. And then... I came back, right, got to play, which was awesome. We fell short to a really good Iowa Western team. Um, a lot, a lot, a lot <laughs> around a lot of talent, right? Um, played with a couple pro guys, played with a couple Division One guys. And so I went from that to Parkside. Um, Parkside was a little bit different, right? Mm -hmm. We struggled a little bit. We were in the middle of changing from one conference to another. A um, couple football scores that were put up against us, right? Oh, wow. Um, but we got better and we progressed and I learned how to how to lose and how to get better by losing, right? You hate losing <laughs> more than you love winning. There we go. There you go. Yeah. I hate I hate losing more than I like winning, mm -hmm. right? And learning how to handle failure, and especially in a game like baseball and building on it and getting back to the drawing board is really what I want to bring cuz like I said I was never the greatest baseball player. Mm -hmm. I was always a really good teammate, led by example, and I worked my tail off. So I can bring that element of seeing both struggling aspect of a baseball player as well as the success, right? Mm -hmm. I was obviously good enough to play in college, but at one point, I didn't want to play it, right? So I can, I can relate to all these kids, right? Whether baseball is their best sport or whether it's their worst sport, I can feel you there, right? I've been in that position, whether it's been being a player of the year in football or not really playing that much on the, on the diamond, right? I see both aspects, and I think that's kind of where I can build relationships with the kids and, and kind of connect to them. Of course, and you guys are both still very young, too, so that you guys are right. really relatable to these kids, and you being to start making it to Auburn, Milwaukee, just tell yeah. us a little bit about how you going to implement that. Better. Yeah, I think the biggest thing with implementing that kind of situation would be kind of what he said in terms of learning from your teammates and learning from the overall aspect of college, but mm -hmm. really learning from the great minds that coached myself as well, you know. Um, down at Auburn, you know, the head coach down there was great. He was great at, you know, making sure that everybody was the same regardless of, you know, your hierarchy or anything like that. Um, taking drills away that we can teach these kids the safe way to throw, the safe way to recover, doing things at the highest level where they have all the information available. Mm -hmm. We can now take that here to these younger kids that will understand that because it's coming from a place of experience. So mm -hmm. I think that's really the biggest thing. And then at Milwaukee, um, being able to take the leadership aspect of it, being an older guy, and understanding that even when injuries arise, you're still looking out for the guy next to you and finding a way, hey, how am I gonna get him better? Regardless mm -hmm. if we're fighting for the same spot, I would way rather be the number two guy and make it to a regional than be the number one guy and be going home you yeah. know, early May. So <laughs> yeah. there's, a, there's, a big, there's a big learning aspect in that. And I think you know, bringing that here is it's just gonna be all the more um, enjoyable when you see these kids get to try out and learn new things. Of course, of course. Have you met the guys already? Like, Have you set them down already in told them, oh, I'm the head coach, nice yeah, to meet yeah. you, everything like that? So we actually had a, I want to say a team meeting probably about a month ago, sat him down, just introduced the whole coaching staff, um, didn't touch on too much of like what we want moving forward, but like just kind of an introduction thing, like, hey, I'm a head coach, here's our assistant coaches, this is how we're going to do things, here's our off season, right, like implementing a lifting schedule, having a schedule for our open gyms and stuff, and so they kind of know what to expect, of course. and then I think once we get down into actually choosing and picking the teams, um, that's where we'll build a little bit more of our culture and kind of find out what we have, right, because... Yeah, Culture, you can't force culture on somebody, nope. right? It's organic. It's dependent on what kids you have, right, and being able to get the best and get the most out of them. Um, so we'll, we'll touch on that once we get to the season, but we had a parent meeting and stuff too, so like 
people know who we are. Yeah, absolutely. They know what we expect. So. Yeah. yeah. How did that feel for you guys? I'm pretty sure head coach. Head hey, probably it's, it's, it's for time. Time. Definitely. <laughs> time. Definitely. Like, even doing this, like, my hands are a little, a little bit sweaty right yeah. now. Yeah. Like, getting up there, I knew that I was made for this, right? Because, like, I've been told by numerous coaches, like, there was, you're going to be a head you're gonna be a head coach one day. And no, like, wait, really? Yeah, you you could probably ask. I'd probably say over 50% of my coaches, like, you're going to be a head coach someday. So it's like, I knew that I was built for this. My family's told me you're going to be a teacher and a head coach. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't want to be a teacher. Yeah. Man. I don't want to do this. I yeah. wanted to be an engineer, right? I went and did sport management. So I knew I wanted to coach. But, mm. like, it's funny how the people around you, know what's going to happen mm -hmm. before you even do. I'm, so, I'm victim to that as well, too. Absolutely. Everyone knows where you're going and everything else. I'm like, I'm just doing this. I'm just right. cruising by. And right. Everyone knows where you're going to be, but that means they see something in you and then they just know your heart. And obviously, you can't, be, you can't beat that. Right. You can't beat that. That's yeah. unmatched. And I mean, with your platform, too, I know we can't use the word recruiting. We can never recruit outside of the school. But man, even like him, like growing up in high school, it's like the kids that are at Indian Trail that are hell of athletes like three sport athletes like come out come out and try out mm -hmm. like just try it out because you never know especially if you're a freshman and you're a stud elsewhere and try it out you don't know what you got in you right exactly. and come over here and we'll take care of you and we'll see what can happen right? exactly how personal would you say this job is for you guys with you guys both being former ita alums i cried when i got the job really oh yeah like thinking about when they told me that I was gonna be the guy, I literally was so tense, right? I was like this, and then, I'm not kidding you, they told me I got the job, and I was like, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I was so relieved, right? Like, I put in so many hours just preparing and, and trying to be almost over-prepared, right? Cause like, I knew I was the guy for this job, but it was going out and proving to them and showing them how much I care. Um, Cause you know, some of the candidates that we went against, or, or that I went against were very good and very qualified, and. You could even argue that they might be a better coach per se, but the passion that I have for the program, the love that I have for the program, the things that I've been through being in this school, being under Coach Schmidt, being under Coach McKay, like you can't you can't break that, right? Like there's you can't touch that. Like that this place is home for me and I, I just can't wait to get us back up to the top. Mm -hmm. Of course. And for you, young man. Yeah, and you know, like you said, we want to be at the top and the biggest thing with that is you know, how much fun and enjoyment we had from just being a part of this program, right? And I think that's really the biggest thing. If you're gonna come into something new like this, I mean, you could go and be a coach elsewhere and make more money. That's not what this is about, mm -hmm. right? This is 100% about giving back and trying to see how far we can take this thing, right? Of course. And seeing kids be in high school and not really love the game and then find that passion and go on to the next level and find something in themselves mm -hmm. and, and maybe save them par their parents a little bit of money on the scholarships, <laughs> like that's our goal here. Of um, course. And really just building young men. That's, that's gonna help that's tremendously. How good does it feel though that you guys get to run the show and obviously you're building it from the ground up so you get to start this how you want to start it. How good does that feel? What, what do you expect going forward with that? It's refreshing because you know, Marty Piss was the coach here before, brought me on staff, mm -hmm. eternally grateful for that, right? But when you have a vision of like, you know, this is my own school, right? This is what we did successful. Like you really just want to be able to have the freedom to not feel like you're walking on eggshells or anything. Not that I was, but like, it's just different being an assistant coach and then being the head coach. Like, I handle everything. Yeah. Like, it's all on you. Yeah, like, my eyes are getting big because, like, it's a lot on my plate, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's a little bit more than I expected, but, like, I embrace it. Like, I'm ready for it and I want it. And, like he said, we've been talking about this since before mm -hmm. I even got the job, right? Absolutely. So it's like, we kind of manifested it in our own because we're like, man, once I get this job, like, it, we're gonna get us back to state. Like whatever we gotta do, we're gonna do it. And my job as a head coach isn't to necessarily do everything myself, right? Like I do have a lot on my plate, but there's a reason why I got these guys on staff, mm -hmm. right? Ryan, obviously we know who he is. Evan Myers, uh, Noah Jensen, Tim Glidden. Those guys are gonna oh, be coaching. Dogs. They're gonna dogs be coaching, man. Like, dogs. like I know baseball. Like I'm the head coach, but I'm more so of a manager, right? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do my coaching. I'm gonna do all that. But the guys that I have on this staff, they're gonna be the reason we're winning, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a reason why I brought them on staff. Yeah. So like, they're making my life easier and I can focus on the head coaching duties more so. And obviously I love to coach and I think I'm knowledgeable, right? I know I'm knowledgeable, but I don't know a damn thing about pitching, right? <laughs> like if I'm taking a mound visit, I'm trying to make my guy laugh or like, you know, loosen him up. Whereas if it's something mechanically sound, 
you got this guy, you got Evan, right? Like, hitting-wise, I know hitting, but I'm going to let Noah handle that because listening to him talk about hitting, the passion that he has for it, the knowledge that he has for it, that's my job as a head coach is to put the whole program and whole team in a position to win. Of course, and that takes it right back to the culture that we were talking about as well, too. Mm-hmm. That winning culture, that positive culture and everything like that. And when you got the yeah. right guys around you, it's going to be instilled in the kids and they can see that. They can yeah. see how happy yeah. you guys are to coach them and how much you guys love the job. And that's going to make them go harder for you guys as well. And I wanted to say that when we started, too, when we started talking about the kids as well, too. Obviously, they're going to be a little bit hesitant as well, too. New coach, new faces mm-hmm. and everything like that. So you want to see can we trust these guys or can, are we going to earn everything from them just like they're going to earn everything from us yep. too. So obviously that takes it right back to the culture and with you guys being able to run the show how you want it, it sounds like a winning formula to me, young man. So yeah, it's a winning formula to me. Absolutely. As we get ready to close out this phenomenal episode, just speak on the things that we should expect coming from ITA baseball going forward. Yeah, so it goes beyond baseball. He kind of touched on it a little bit, but the first thing that I said to these guys is, You can throw baseball out the window. We're going to teach you guys how to become young men, right? You're going to be respectful. You're going to have manners. You're going to clean up after yourself. You're going to carry yourself a certain way. Everything else is going to follow. These guys know what they're talking about. I know what I'm talking about baseball-wise, right? But it starts with creating young men, right? Even if these guys, 50% of them might play baseball, probably lower, honestly. you got to go into society and be a functioning adult, Mm -hmm. right? Like, Like I said, my coach has built a lot of character in me. So that we're going to challenge you guys. You guys are going to fail, but it's how are you going to react, right? You're going to fail. You're not going to get a hit down, right? The next guy up, he's going to get that hit for you. He's going to pick you up. How are you going to react? Are you just going to go put your head down? Or are you going to cheer on your teammate who's picking you up, right? right. So I think that in itself is going to tie into the baseball, right? Baseball is an easy, it's not an easy game. But if you do the little things right, the little things add up. And if you play baseball the right way, it's going to treat you right. Yes, sir. So everything that we do when it comes to getting prepared and just being the smartest team out there, it's all going to fall into place. And I'm excited for this season because I know the winning is going to follow. But it's about teaching them how to become young men first. Yes, yeah, like he said, the little things. I think he killed it right there because the biggest thing in life and in sports is just the little things and a lot of people take those for granted like Mm -hmm. having a routine right understanding like you're not going to be late to things if you have a consistent routine within your day right wake up have your stuff ready know what you're trying to do every single day so you're not what's going on right when practice starts right Right. having respect for your teachers respect for your parents respect for us right that goes a long way as well and I think it really mitigates a lot of issues with parents and coaches that's the number one thing you see a lot of times and that's why it drives coaches nuts is because the communication from the players is not there right we need this to be an open spot where it's like hey you got to come up to us if you have a concern let's talk about it right and that way we can build men by actually using communication as an advantage for us. Of course. I got goosebumps just listening to you guys. I feel like I'm sitting here with two Ray Lewises right now. For real, for real. You guys are going to do great. You guys are going to do great. Thanks, man. But like I said, close out. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host with the most, Devon Booker. That's been Lane Oaks. That's been Ryan Horder. We expect greatness from you guys this year. Thank you guys very much for your time. It, Thanks for having Always me. fun. Yes, Always sir. Fun. You calling or you listening? Tune in every week. Line for line. Oh, yeah, I'm going live for line.